so much bad news these days. We're back with some good news, and it's a Fox News alert. Two big jobs reports just released moments ago. 19, uh, let's see, nine minutes ago. 4.8 million jobs were added in June. Economists had predicted maybe around 3 million. As you can see, that is a gigantic blowout number, Ainsley. That's right. The national unemployment rate dropping from 13.3% in May to 11.1%, Brian. Yep, the weekly jobless claims report also out. Just over 1.4 million Americans filing for unemployment last week. That's a little higher than what some economists predicted. More than 48 million Americans have filed for unemployment since the start of the pandemic. Uh, let's bring in Senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham. Senator, first off, your take on this and what it means for another rescue package just on, on first take. Well, it means we need a, a rescue package that would hit the gas to make the economy grow faster. This is really good news. It means America is coming back economically. People are going back to work. There's confidence that you can actually open up the country. So the president is proposing a payroll tax cut that would put money in the pocket of consumers and businesses. That would stimulate the economy. An infrastructure bill to give America a facelift with our road, bridges, and ports. That would set in motion future job creation. Uh, we need to make sure you don't pay people more in unemployment benefits than they get to work. That will help get people back to work. I'm even willing to do a minimum wage increase. There are so many things, liability reform, so you can open up without being sued. Congress needs to act in July to continue this trend. If we yeah. had the right kind of stimulus package, we would be going through the roof by October in terms of economic growth. Okay, I know y'all are taking a two-week <clears throat> break. When are y'all back, and when do you think this next uh, relief package will be released? Uh, just as soon as we get back, we, we need to get off our ass and get this done. Got the, bottom line here is, <laughs> the bottom line here is we got an opening, take it. It may not last. Now, the coronavirus can be a wet blanket in all this reopening yeah. if we don't control it. So President Trump needs to get on the phone and call all the governors. What can I do to help you? What do you need that you don't have? Let's really double down on testing because that gives us insight how to control the virus. Uh, and a vaccine and therapies are on the way. I'm, I'm increasingly optimistic that we're going to uh, control the virus right. and reopen the economy smartly. And, and that's really the key because even though the numbers are going up, you know, we're approaching 50,000 uh, new cases right. yesterday, uh, we're figuring out how to manage it. And, yes. you know, with social distancing and masks and pharmaceuticals yes. and things like that. So when you look at that and you think, you know, we shut down the whole world for the most part <laughs> for about 100 days. Did we ever do it on that or was that just part of the learning curve? Because in the beginning, we didn't know where that was going. And I hear a lot of chatter on, on cable TV. I need to probably watch less of it. You're one of the chatterers, show. sir. Yeah, except for your show. Uh, here's the deal. President Trump was told if you do nothing and let the herd immunity mentality take over, you're going to lose 2 million Americans. We're going to probably have 180,000 dead after having shut the whole world down. So I think President Trump's decision to shut down the economy and focus on protective equipment coming mm -hmm. back to America, vaccines and therapies and testing, save probably a couple of million people's lives. If you don't think this is deadly by now, what would it take to convince you this virus is right. deadly? Right, let's switch to Russia. Point. Beth Sanner is the president's briefer, and Beth Sanner did not verbally brief the president on the threat of the Russians, if the, the fact is proven correct, the Russians giving the Taliban yeah. money to kill right. Americans. Now, Seth Moulton says, from what he knows, the president uh, uh, committed treason. Where's Lindsey Graham stand? Well, I don't know if uh, Congressman Moulton has been briefed, but I would say I'm a fairly hawkish guy. Would you agree with that? Yes, principle? absolutely. That Russia's been up to no good in a lot of different places, and I don't have a whole lot of affection for Putin's Russia. But I do understand the military. I think the system got it right. You had contradictory intelligence. We increased force protection just to be cautious. But I can't imagine briefing the president of the United States about this allegation, given the nature of the intelligence. Now, where were all these Democrats when Benghazi was on fire, when they were calling for help from the consulate? The president of the United States, Obama, was brief and went to bed and never called anybody for a day and a half while our people were being slaughtered in Benghazi. Where's the outrage then? 
The intelligence here, in my view, does not justify a nation state conflict with Russia. Yeah. Well, you, you were briefed, though, right? And what did yes, they say? I was briefed, and I asked a lot of hard questions. And, you know, you don't tell the president of the United States everything you would tell a second lieutenant. Right, exactly. Senator, um, you know, given what we now know, uh, you know, about the briefer and all that other stuff as well, um, it shouldn't surprise anybody that it's a big story in the New York Times. I mean, that's what they do. They come up with these big stories to make Donald Trump look bad. And it's all BS. It's not, he wasn't briefed. And there, there was no consensus. As a matter of fact, the most reliable form of intelligence gathered around this episode uh, was against Russia giving money to the Taliban. The Iranians are giving money to the Taliban. Russia has been giving weapons to the Taliban. The point is that this president, and I disagree with him sometimes about military footprints over there to protect us here. But when it comes to American personnel on the ground in harm's way, this president has an unwavering desire and commitment to protect our troops on the ground. If you don't believe me, ask the 400 Russian mercenaries that were killed in Syria when they threatened our troops. Yeah, they were wiped out. Um, yeah, you can't ask them because they're dead. Real quick, Carl Rover, an editorial today in the Wall Street Journal, saying the president's got to reset in the next few months or he's going to lose. Do you believe the president has to reset his re-election? Re uh, yeah, I think he's got to go on the offense. I don't know if he's going to lose or not, but he's got a hell of a story to tell. He should start telling it. Uh, you want to bring back protective equipment in this country from China? I got a bill that would give a tax credit to make PPE here and put it under the Berry Amendment, treating it like military uniforms, a national security asset. Uh, China lied and America's di Americans died. Let, let American citizens sue, sue the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah. Do an infrastructure bill. You go on offense, Mr. President. In your second term, what do you want to do? Finish the job of your first term. Keep building the wall. Fix a broken immigration system. More judges. Uh, make sure Iran never gets a nuclear weapon. I think the president's right on all of these issues. He's for law and order. And Joe Biden is being controlled by the most radical people in this country. This election is still Donald Trump's to mm -hmm. lose, but prosecute the case, Mr. President. Hey, uh, Senator Graham, before you go, I saw you played uh, golf with the president yeah. over the weekend. Who he won? Was, he, I've never <laughs> seen him play this well. I mean, he's got more on his shoulders. Yeah, I'm hoping, okay, you know, he's a little distracted. He beat me like a drum. I mean, it was amazing. He shot 74. Always lose to the boss. I, I, I'm not joking. Yeah. I mean, I, if okay. I could beat him, I would. <laughs> sure. Senator, it's South Carolina's in our thoughts and prayers uh, dealing with COVID down there, and yeah. we lost that pilot at Shaw Air Force Base. So, sure. Uh, thanks so much for what you do for that great state. Thank and you. And thanks for joining us.